Mr. Chairman, dear colleagues, uh, first I would like to thank Professor Knecht and all his team for their kind invitation and to congratulate them for the very high quality of the meeting. Thank you. So, Professor Hero asked me to do as a short five minutes introduction to the salivary gland session to focus on one special topic, the radiotherapeutic option to avoid mucositis and xerostomia. Malignant tumors of the salivary glands are re relatively rare, with an estimated incidence of less than 100,000. Uh, they represent a little less than 5% of adenic tumors, and these are generally slow-growing tumors of varied histology. They are heterogeneous set of tumors with minor, minor salivary glands, ma major salivary glands, and some glands are disseminate all along the upper oral digestive tract, and quite a lot of tumor cells type, like kistic adenoid carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, etc. Those tumors are considered as radioresistant and chemoresistant, and for these tumors, the role of new radiation modalities, IMRT, heavy ions therapy, neutron therapy is emphasized, and so I will shortly present was radiotherapeutic options to avoid mucositis and xerostomia for these tumors. In 3D conformal radiotherapy, classical ones with photons plus electrons, we have free fields technique which avoid contralateral parotids. That's a good treatment for parotid glands, and in this case, uh, xerostomia can be uh, very rare if you have the, the opportunity to do a good 3D conformal treatment. But for other localizations like submandibular glands, it's not so evident, and for minor salivary glands all along the upper aerodigestive tract, it's even more difficult. And the big problem is the radioresistance and chemoresistance of those lesions with a limited effect of classical photon therapy on bulky disease. For unresectable cases or macroscopical residual tumor first after surgery, the efficacy is really very uh, little. I was uh, conducted, uh, I was leading the French National Guidelines Group, so uh, to establish the guidelines for those tumors, and it, it has been actualized just at the end of 2007. And the new French network for rare adenic tumors is also uh, born in France, and I lead also the group for salivary gland. Basic treatment is complete surgical excision with or without postoperative radiation. But postoperative radiotherapy, and we'll speak about that with Dr. Riedel afterwards, uh, is mainly indicated for most of the cases for high-grade tumors and for uh, stage three and four. High grades, for in histologically uh, speaking, it's not exactly the same as the pathologic findings. We have uh, uh, tumors considered as low-grade adenocarcinoma, which has to, have to be considered as high-grade tumors for a clinical set, and we treat them as high-grade tumors. For non-resectable disease, neutron therapy, and now heavy ions therapy, is the treatment of choice due to the very little efficacy of classical photon therapy. But just to, to see that uh, our strategy is not easy to, to, to re, uh, uh, to, to present, we have uh, so many cases, it's uh, just not, uh, we have uh, parotid glands, minor salivary glands, so uh, to establish guidelines is not an uh, easy task, but uh, we have now a consensus in France that will be published next month for each cases, it's in French, sorry, but uh, the place uh, for, of radiotherapy uh, with heavy ions and neutron therapy has been well defined for unresectable disease or for disease uh, with, uh, un, uh, with uh, surgery with really um, high residual disease uh, that can be, at, at, um, in, that can be um, really uh, cured by classical photon therapy. 
neutral therapies and uh, AV ions is the treatment of choice, as I said, for non-resectable cases. And we had uh, some good results in this with our neutron facility, which has been closed last year, and now we have going, we go to AV ions uh, uh, projects. But with neutron therapy we, for really advanced non-resectable parotid glands tumor, we had uh, more than 45% of local control at five years. That was the first very short part of, of the presentation, but uh, Dr. Iro, Iro told me, uh, you have to present your data about IMRT uh, because for minor salivary gland disseminated along the aural digestive tract, you have this long experience now of uh, IMRT with uh, preservation of uh, salivary glands with classical uh, treatment. This is with photon therapy. This is a, a slide from uh, Clemson Link from Memorial with the classical difference between 2D treatment, very uh, bad treatment for base of the skull part of the tumor, and the same dose on the mandibular and the parotid glands as on the tumor. With free treatment pan, that's nasopharynx, we had a good treatment for most of the tumor, but the parotid glands receive more than 85% of the dose. Now with IMRT, we have less than 25% of the total dose, and really at five years you will see the difference is really, really significant. So this uh, dramatic improvement in the, not just on the precision, but mainly of the selectivity of radiation is really for us a big, big progress. For, as uh, Professor Ang said, we need a very high quality control for these uh, treatments. In each phase of the treatment, from the contention to the dosimetry, the contouring is, is such a big, uh, such important phase. We have to be uh, uh, in a multidisciplinary approach to, to, to know exactly what zone have to, uh, have to be uh, included in the uh, GTV, in the CTV, and uh, the, the, the zone that could be spared without risk for the patients. With IMRT, we don't treat little volumes in our expansion. We prefer to treat rather large volume, but to spare, to spare some areas with no risk. To, to define the volume, you have now CT scan, MRI, and PET scan, which help us to define the, the CTV free, the, the zone with the highest dose. And this, with this sort of treatment, we have less than here 20% of the dose. And this patient at five years are really uh, excellent quality of life. Uh, the concept of IMRT, not to speak uh, very uh, long with that, is just to, the, to resume. You can say that we can go through some organs without gi giving them a, a significant dose. And that's uh, due to the movement of the leaves during the treatment. And it's not at all the same than stereotaxy. We, had, we conduct a, a, st a study in France with more than uh, 10 centers just to compare. With, it's not a randomized study. It was a, a comparative study between 3D treatment plans and IMRT. And we m measure the salivary flow before and after stimulation with parafilm, before treatment, and at three months, then every six months. Results are quite interesting. It was, uh, we, we had tumors from oropharynx and nasopharynx, the first one, and then we go to more than 120 patients. Two types of dosimetric comparison, 3D and IMRT, and some of the patients were treated with IMRT uh, when it was uh, available during the, uh, at the department, just a selection due to the facility uh, possibilities, and the other were treated with 3D treatment plan. And with uh, IMRT plan, 
we had a mean dose to the contralateral parotid at 28 gray compared to 47 with free treatment plan. Of course, significant for all the patients, the difference was uh, present. Step and shoot IMRT leads to a 21% decrease in mean dose for the ipsilateral gland and 41% in the mean dose for contralateral glands. Does it mean that we will really uh, have a good saliva at the long term after this treatment? That's what we measured. And we have a very interesting results with IMRT for all the patients after a decrease in saliva between three and six months. Saliva became normal at 18 months, not for the 3D treatment plans. It, it has been resumed here. The difference even at three months was significant. The decrease is less important with IMRT. At 12 months, we go back to 80% of the saliva and at 18 months, we go for, to normal saliva. That was people uh, treated with, with, high, with large volumes, not uh, little volumes. And uh, so we, we can tell our patients we will have uh, xerostomia for one year and then it will recover. And that's a real progress. Just was slide to say that acute toxicity was not better, of course, we treat with a, a chemotherapy uh, associated treatment with chemo for most of our patients. And uh, as it was said before during the meeting, acute toxicity is not a limited problem for us. We accept uh, mucositis and we manage it with uh, nutrition, laser, local treatment. But uh, the dramatic progress is preventing late effects and to have a complete dose, even the higher dose on the, uh, on the volume are re at risk without late toxicity. So uh, the message is just to say that uh, uh, with our new treatment in radiation, we can obtain better local control even for radioresistant uh, tumors uh, like salary glands in a post-operative setting, not for uh, radiation alone, which uh, the treatment has to be uh, done with IV ions and with local treatment during uh, local care, sorry, during uh, the treatment, we can avoid uh, f grade three or four mucositis and go to the end of the treatment. And late effects are quite uh, absent. Even uh, osteoarthronecrosis are in our uh, series, no cases no problem with uh, sclerosis, and it was not just a problem of xerostomia. So thank you for your attention. <laughs> mm -hmm.